problems or or breaking them down into simpler ones but what is left out is how do you train them of what makes sense of the data coming out of this disintegration of complex problems into smaller problems now for this you require manpower we have not been able to you know uh, eventually capitalize on our digital thinking or ai based solutions where machines can just independently work on the analytical thinkings and innovations that people are working on them now look at these inside this should become a precursor for you when you design any course of any stage because bear in mind what you what you learned why way back while you were a student has changed over time the same subjects and concepts would have been there but the requirements today are different to understand the requirement accordingly bring about a course plan is very vital so i believe you are able to understand now how this blended learning even before we get into blended learning how are we supposed to direct ourselves how are we expected to discipline ourselves in the requirements to be foreseen in the next generation this era students would not just listen to you in the classroom believe me unless they are clear about the take away or the outcomes of what they desire because they know i can easily complement them from the online material and if you have to pick some content which has been delivered from renowned universities and say i'm going to give you this as a recap of a blended learning they will just mock at you because they know i can as well do it by myself and you know what's so much great about it but can you evoke their skills can you evoke their different talents what they have in them through different mechanisms which are offered in your courses your blended learning will be more successful i'm swiftly going to get into the prototyping or some of the things that we have been doing at the christ which should give you some insight about is this possible or is is this kind of things could be integrated in a curriculum what we did was now mind you when i say when we we need to move from the conceptual level to the prototyping level we cannot just leave it to the students and say please go and innovate because we teachers will have to do we'll have to travel extra mile in providing them the resources providing them the facilities and ensuring that these are already engraved for them to experiment so what we did internally was the following things we created some kind of industry oriented curriculum for them some skill based training some centers for excellences some practices which are coming from researchers i mean they are genuine and you know uh, getting onto the skill base not just confining to papers some multidisciplinary practices associations with government non government organizations and connecting students with internationalization i'm not going to dwell into all of them for the want of time but maybe some other occasion we could have chance to deliberate upon at least few of the others i might just pick up one or two of them and get into it just to cite the first one industry oriented curriculum this is an area that we have created where industries can come on board and keep their problem statements which they wish is not to be as a prima facie content to be taken up at their premises they wish to see whether it's it's it might work it might not work but we are not we don't have time to you know experiment on them can you guys do that so we have a center for that students come out of their interest gets a live project there what industries have parked try to experiment upon the doability of it they fail doesn't matter sometimes it click it's a win win situation for both students and industry through university now these experimentations led to some centers today at the university and i'm just focusing few of them uh, about four of them i've put down here e sail e mobility disaster management on some global electives and this resulted further into some product which are pitched in the market today you must have read on papers on the straws the straw the coconut leaf straw which was you know recently picked up by one of us one of our mentor teachers with a student group of students they call themselves as blessing palms another product that's underway just getting into the market it's right now at the phase of being uh, developed as a product is a non invasive glucometer and the third one is some concepts of materials that we have gone in with a low cost brick now this is some success stories which i projected to you on a big picture what i intend to do next is take specific four test cases and tell you what did we do in these in terms of their achievements to start with number 1 there's a big boom out there called industry 4.0 and often people say we want to get into this industry 4.0 and it's linked to something called as automation we have a small center in the university called automation which 
primarily de deals with concepts of you know the pneumatics the hydraulics and the you know the uh, softwares around there now we tagged an incentive with this to the student and we told them those of you wish to expose yourself on a world skills and we bind you world skills is a world skills competition which happens at hanover uh, every year where several industries and institutions partner and you know go on board we incentivized in terms of deploying them to this level and got themselves trained and what you see as an image here is the skilling training which happened on a blended basis now what could be possible out here connecting with so called the pioneers in those who have achieved the top levels of you know the skill competitions and who have won the award we did something like that our students were linked with our next door a uh, big giant called toyota kirloskar company which for past 3 years they have been the top notch you know uh, pioneers pioneers in world skill competition our students went shook hands got themselves qualified and what you see is a live demonstration happening out there and connected with them with the with the list of students sitting down in the university premises and getting a hands on of the activities what they are doing here now for them to get there they had to qualify certain rounds but what we made was after having qualified others sitting down in the university also got benefited through this two students a perfect example of a blended learning where something they could not get a reach of being uh, through a virtue of what they have been performing but getting a reach through other students a perfect student to student connect through an industry now believe me these students who have been got in here have qualified the regional level the state level and india skill now we are heading towards world, world skill competition uh, this year we may not be able to make it but possibly in another couple of years we intend to be out there one example of a blended learning for a group of students who are really core interested in skilling now what i meant the crux is incentivizing students in terms of what they can attain is a success story of a blended learning number 2 we got into a curriculum called service assisted integrated learning so what is this this is something to do with engineering curriculum associated or integrated with requirements or identifying requirements of the society and getting down at their rescue this doesn't mean just picking up some certain things available in the market and deploying them but rather innovation been a factor here we coined this back in 2015 16 and it is reached to some level and i wish to share an a success story here the crux of this program is they design they build and they deploy real systems to solve engineering problems of the community And let's see what were these problems. The university, the premises that we have located, just about five kilometers away from here, you would see, uh, you know, a river called Vishwavati. And uh, for those of you know, you might, uh, you know, uh, uh, appreciate what I'm talking about. But those of you do not know, uh, you must have read in the social media or in the headlines that how this, you know, toxic frothing used to happen in these rivers. and these are primarily out of those you know the uh, companies who would just dump their waste as a sewage without treating and quite a good number of them being the textile industries or the painting industries and you would see all sorts of heavy metals been on a huge you know quantity in this water affecting the flora the fauna even including human in the human beings living around the vicinity and, and thousands of people almost 55 villages who actually take you know a, a rescue of this water both for themselves for their living purposes for the inhabitants and all the rest students went across identified a typical problem and not just that they tried connecting this through students overseas now we had a connect of such students from two universities miami university and kungfuk national university at south korea now for them reaching out to a community was a very big incentive and they are very good at technology uh, it's perfectly marrying of these two things technology come social interaction through a mediator and our students started interacting with them on an online platform through several interactions through several presentations several literature reviews everything was on a blended mode until they could meet together and then walk hand in hand in the villages of 
the premises very close to our university. It's called Bairamangala village of Bidhi. Some of you who know, you might appreciate this, uh, but others who do not know, this is very close to the university. They chalk out a plan and when they come here after having an year-long exercise, they go for an execution. And what you see as a resultant of that is something which is worthwhile. They come out with a solution which is worthwhile to be deployed at the villages and together students of Christ and international students join hands and take the pride of having them executed and calling themselves as innovators. Now, what are the key features here? These are the things which automatically get embedded into it. The kind of identifying need assessment, kind of interventions on innovations, liaisoning with NGOs, with transdisciplinary teams, a vertical integration of participation of students, choice-based credits, and end-to-end -end experience for a student. And what we saw is this. One of the pressing problems, the crops grown there are so much high on lead content, it becomes difficult for people to consume it. One of the problems. Second problem was medical hazard. The intake of the water was so high in these heavy metals, literally an age group of between 16 to 24 would suffer from type 2 diabetics. We took them on priorities and students and these students came together, worked together. They work, I mean, the, what you see is a picture of a primary healthcare center and the doctors confronted us saying that if your students could do something innovation on a non-invasive pricking, uh, without pricking, if they could get the glucose content, which of course now it's existing, but we developed this back in 2018-19 and got it patented. Now students worked around, they joined hands, they came together, the resultant was what you see in the picture here. A product developed, deployed formally, conducted a medical health camp for them, presented one to them, and the, the product got patented. Now, this included a lot of blending learning exercises from students. Now here the students took the lead, teachers never took the lead. These were just integrated with the curriculum, intended for the society. And as I said, these problem statements year on year keep changing. And we have different verticals which have been presented. And what is the takeaway from here? It's kind of a nuances and pedagogical changes. Giving an impetus on a social connect. Enhancing the sensibility between student and a teacher. Develop that innovation culture. In a subtle note, the soft skills development gets embedded into a student. A perfect collaboration, not just with industry, but with NGOs, with government, non-government sectors, with civil administrations, etc., etc. What else could a student would want when they have a learning of this nature, which is far beyond blending, but far beyond on an, exper on an experiential learning? This is one example. As I said, several verticals have been created. I just mentioned about healthcare. Uh, we have agriculture management, we have water management, we have disaster management. Year on year, these requirements, you know, go multifolded so that we have students reaching out in terms of giving them engineering solutions on an innovation. And again, underline the word innovation. It's not just replicating where what is existing in the market to a community, but rather bringing about a new technical solution for them, looking at the need of what they really need at that point in time. Moving to the next level is, this is the final, the, the, the total team which went with the execution and as I just mentioned about the collaboration of two universities. The next one I wish to deploy here is on the liberal arts, which I'm sure a good number of you are, you know, part of it. And what I wish to mention here is an engineering liberal arts. You might wonder what is this? Yes. For that, let me just pick up something on this next slide and tell you that students, I mean, often in the country, you and I know it very well that uh, every individual apparently says he wants to be, I mean, or every parent rather aspires their wants to be either a doctor or an engineer. It's kind of a notion in the country. But unfortunately, these are not been the right traits picked up by the students. And you would have also seen or read in the paper saying that Indian graduates, especially engineering graduates, only 30 percentage employed. These are all notions, let me tell you. Let me just open up that Pandora box in front of you. As I said, good number of our students are driven by their peer pressure or by their parental pressure just to get into these. They often feel that somewhere their wish or their interests have never been considered and they forcibly try to get into the engineering domain. What does that result into? 
only 30% of them get into the core engineering field. Does it mean that all the remaining 70 people, 70% 70 of the persons are sitting or idle out there for the past several years? No. They are into something or others. They are definitely breadwinners of their family members in terms of doing something. But the core engineering stream is something what they are really not interested in or they would not have gotten through. So what we did was we identified this pulse of the students that come in and we opened up for them an avenue. Now, this is an avenue provided while a student completes four years of engineering. He has to mandatorily take up any one of these. And these are compulsory electives given for the students. All of them are floated, but they need to choose only one. Looking at the interest of the students, they get into different realms. They start from, you know, the acting courses to the dance courses to the vocal courses offered by, you know, the law students, from the law students, from IPR or to the psychology students or to the level of languages, foreign languages, or maybe the hotel management offering, offering programs like restaurant management, Asia cuisine, architecture department offering, you know, the exploring terracotta or paper arts or data analytics offered by MBA students or the MBA, I mean, uh, department. Students get a leverage of getting into them. Now, what resulted is most important. One such test case I would like to bring here, group of students who took the subject called design thinking. Their mentor was an English teacher. Yes, English teacher. And he took them through. And as one of the exercises for them under blended learning was to get through an essence of evoking the nature and benefiting the community and acting responsibly to the environment. And what they did was really surprising. They got joined hands together, engineering versus economics versus psychology versus a master student joined together and they formed a team, a perfect blend. They came out with, I mean, we had a lot of coconut trees around and they thought about having picked up one such and getting an innovation of developing a straw, which was internationally acclaimed, patented, and today, more than developing the straws, they also provide jobs to women folks in the country and they are made entrepreneurs. That's the success story out there. And today it's a recognized registered startup you know, of the university, recognized under the Ministry of Commerce. A perfect example of another blended learning where students went all out, got in conceptual learning, integrated them, people of different walks joined together and they're associated. The gentleman that you see out here is a person who's a key person, the mentor, Professor Shaji. And what you see here are the orders they receive internationally today, almost 50, 25 million straws, which have been coming as an order for them from different countries. This is something which was, again, an example cited with regards to how students' innovation can go through blended learning to an outcome. Again, underlining word, they were passionate about something to do. Teacher was just an instrument to evoke that and get them on board. Next example I have is something to do with an innovation in the curriculum. Now here, this slide, what you see, is a typical curricular slide. Don't get into this. This is a typical curricular slide any engineering institutions might have. We also have about 155 credits that we offer for an undergrad program with these many number of courses which are offered in allied areas. But as a university, we went extra mile and we tried looking at the requirement, what I projected to you under the World Economic Forum, need of the hour, and we tried shifting gears in terms of what is pertinent for the students in terms of early integration and following where our, into, in, our innovations. We intertwined, as an example, a BTEC in computer science and engineering with a minor in psychology. Yes, you heard it right, with a minor in psychology. A BTEC in computer science or a mechanical engineering with a minor in CIMA, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, or with a minor in architecture, and the other two are upcoming, a minor in computing, soft, I mean, the quantum computing and gaming technology. Now, these are kind of unheard in the country at the moment, at least for the psychology minor and CIMA minor. It took us time. Just to take one example again for the paucity of time, what did we do, do with CIMA? CIMA is a chart, I mean, you, most of you might know that it's an international certification, UK-based certification. Generally, students after completing MBA and serving in industry for about three to five years would dare to get into CIMA and qualify four levels of tests. What we did was we brought that experience to the students of those interested through a blended mode 
and offering them right at their inception from their second year of curriculum. The success story was in four years time, we had students qualifying four levels, not just that, good number of them received gold medal from CIMA. At the same time, there were laurels with regards to first time in the Southern Asia, an engineering institution integrating CIMA at the engineering curriculum. Of course, you might uh, you know, say being a university, we could do that definitely. We took the pride and we leveraged our exercises of as a university to go that extra mile and get this done. But what is important here is the extent of flip learning, incentivizing students onto what is required by the market. Fetched us incentives here, fetched us that traction with the student of they becoming automatically serious. And when you hear about, you know, things like students self-motivated would only get into programs of their choices. Yes. If you ask me a group of 60 students, all 60 might have different groups, different groups wanting to get into different levels. Can we identify them as a teacher? Remember, as a teacher, we need to first travel extra mile. Unless we understand the pulse of our students, what are they keen in? What interest lies in them? Connecting them to the market. Connecting them to the need of the hour, connecting them to what you foresee in the next five to ten years, students will never accept it. This was the next test case. The, 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 the third one I wish to bring about is fast tracking. Of course, all of these possibly you would have heard in the prior discussion of ABC, the Academic Bank of Credit. But it's only that you know we at Christ started implementing them right from 2016. So this is something that uh, you know we told students: you can fast track your four years of engineering, provided, provided you get yourself skilled in an area recognized by an industry, not for a job, but for a paid internship. Institute will help you in fetching that, but you need to deploy or portray your traits by explicitly showing the skills that you developed. And institute will train you in that. Several examples. And I wish to put some statistics here. 2017-18, when we started, there were just eight students who qualified, went out for that. Over years, in 2021, you see 76 of them. Now, what I'm trying to portray here is a culture which has changed. The moment you incentivize students saying that I'm going to expedite your course by half an year, provided that remaining half an year you will be in an industry doing an internship with a paid internship. Today, in 21-22, we have 178 students out there. And that too, during an internship, they get a pay package of somewhere around 55 to 60,000. This is not an industry package for job. It's only an industry package for an internship. But this incentivization through a blended learning, now when you ask me how did we fast track this, the entire eight semester curriculum was dealt through a blended learning by industry interface. Now how did that industry interface happen? My next slide tells you. Again, from 2013 onwards, we traveled all this extra mile to ensure state-of-the-art facilities deployed in the university premises. On the left-hand side, what you see is an institution of a high-end automation lab. Just below that is what you see an institution of a Mercedes Daimler Group's high-end lab where employees of Mercedes and our students together run experiments there. Just below that, the blue color is what you see the experimentation lab of an anechoic chamber, again an industry standard used to test antennas, naive antennas which sits in your mobile which are not seen outside, being tested out there. And these are kind of integration facilities that we have provided students that they can, you know, club and get the essence of what is there and integrate these modules as a blended learning exercise for the students. Then what happens is teacher need not be there. Teacher can be complemented by the exercises performed in these laboratories by a batch which would have completed a year ago. So what I gave you an example of eSale, it has become a kind of a success story for several batches to follow. Teachers take this as a case study in the classroom, relate them as a blended learning and it doesn't end there. It goes further by asking students to form groups and take up a newer project in the blended learning. That gets into another success story as a case study for the ensuing batch. This trend continues. And I believe, according to me, we are at the right time. The entire nation is at the crux of implementing NDP. And every college or university should look forward for creating an ecosystem within their premises, not by just evoking some 
you know, content, digital content or a video of an XYZ university or an XYZ person and then putting it up saying that I do blended learning, it will be an utter failure. But this is an exercise or a journey which requires a blended learning over an extended period of time. So hence, make a beginning somewhere. And that beginning has to be, as I said, very clearly providing a directives on what are your learning curves, how do you ensure your course course outcomes have been met at every level without forgetting the program educational objective. Once your students complete a three years arts or a three years commerce or a three years sciences, what is he expected to do in the market? Have you clearly direct, directed them or given them a motive of what they're expected to do? Then you will automatically know what to integrate in your blended learning. And I think that's precisely what is the need of the R and how we can actually, you know, get the whole system moving in with regards to this uh, interventions which we just now presented. I think that's all from my end. I will uh, stop here presenting and I'll check out if there are any questions from the group that I can answer for. Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that, you know, an online teaching should not exceed beyond half an hour. But uh, given to me and one hour, I said I would not do justice if I just blew out after half an hour. But at least let me do justice by putting up after 45 minutes and then leaving aside some time for the audience to ask questions. So that I'm sure there will be a lot of inquisitiveness with regards to uh, what you heard just now and the concept of blended learning, which is there in you. So please come out from the conventional blended learning, but at the same time, have an urge to think about what actually should be blended learning. As I said, blended learning is more about outside experience integrating them into your curriculum through a execution model which can happen either in the classroom or at the digital mode. But what are your outcomes there? How well you can bring about their experience through this media or through this proposal? I think that's something which is a crux of blended learning. With that note, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for having me here. Over to the program coordinators. Thank you, sir, for the very insightful session. Now I would like to meet Dr. Fancy Paul, Assistant Professor, the part Participants, in case any participants can raise questions, they can ask questions now. Sir, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. I believe it's Selva. Yes, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, it was uh, what to tell. It was something uh, uh, you have just nailed the uh, things what you have done, and it was really uh, something. Uh, uh, it, it is something new to us because I belong to Arts and Science College, and the way you have taken your students and then they have made uh, made it uh, remarkable. So first, I should appreciate the work done by your staff members and students. Thank you. And I've learned a lot today, and it's an eye-opener to us. And I, I just have a question. And how did you manage the time, time management? Uh, uh, when do you do these activities, even if you have just brought into the curriculum? Uh, I yes. just want to know. Yeah. So I think uh, the trajectory is paved, you know, uh, way back. What I gave you as a glimpse is about an outcome that we are currently experiencing the fruit. So the uh, road was paved way back in 2014-15, the clear directions on what all things should happen. So um, on a subtle note, we put up our directives as our program objectives. And we said, if our students have to complete four years of mechanical engineering or computer science engineering, how would they be recognized in the market down the lane five years, looking at the present scenario? On that note, we intertwined and what kind of skillings are missed out on them. And then we identified what are the responsible activities that we do. Because in our university, as I presented in the beginning, our motors are very clear. And we need to express our motors in terms of the education provided, which is excellence and service, through those four, five core values which I presented to you. Now, reaching out, service is an easy term, but reaching out to the community is a difficult term, right? But to, yes. make, it implement, to make it implementing is something which, you know, people have to uh, take a pain of traveling extra mile. So what we did was we, on a subtle note, introduced in the curriculum a subject called service learning. So oh. this gave students a flavor of, academically, they're getting three credits. 
At the same time, they need to do an exercise worthwhile for the community. This need not be done by one batch. It can be a group of you know, students over years who can accomplish. But the problem title is clearly directed to them, given to them in the platter, that your purview within the semester is this much. It gets completed, gets passed on to the next batch. But three years down the lane, we should have a certain outcome which we desire. So this was entrusted to the teachers. Now remember, when I talk about teachers, it's not easy. Teachers are not trained inherently to take this activity. So we had to do a capacity building exercise within the university, something we called as a competency building exercise for teachers, which is, a, which is intertwined in the culture. Every semester, newer traits have been deployed. At the moment, if you ask me, the trend out in the university is every individual should know the skills of AIML as a teaching community. You might be from English literature, you might be from law, you might be from commerce, but you should know AIML at different levels and try to see how AIML is applicable for you in your curriculum. And please put an effort to intertwine them. This is one of the exercises for our teachers under implementation of NEP. But when I say that, we cannot just leave with that statement. We need to do exercise of grooming them up. So we have programs enlisted to train them in different phases. In fact, we started this in 2019-20. During pandemic, we completed first phase. The second phase was putting up industries on board or at the university's cost to identify how AIML is applicable for a law graduate, how AIML is applicable for a student, I mean, a faculty of civil engineering or a mechanical engineering, which is unheard of, and giving them that insight of, yes, me as a teacher of mechanical or a law or a civil, now I know what I should take to the classroom. I think that's the insight which needs to be developed. And according to me, this cannot happen overnight. As I said, the most important valuable asset with any college or a university are the teachers. And the, the, the change should begin there because otherwise students will be on one pl you know, platform, teachers will be on another platform, they will never be able to converge at any given point in time. So this was a, you know, an integration that we did. Superb, sir. Superb. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. Hats off to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, is it Anu? Yes, sir. Anu yes, Nathikir. madam. Go ahead. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, sir, I just wanted to ask you for uh, an arts and science college like ours. How do you think this student to community interaction be incorporated uh, effectively? Very, you have a lot of insights. In fact, I would say more than engineering, you should be the ones going out and you know interacting with. In fact, we drew inspiration at the university from our students of arts, students of sciences. Uh, who had a community reach program embedded in their, you know, in, in not exactly in their curriculum, but in their ecosystem. Then we started thinking, what, how can engineering play a role? In fact, it was reverse. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, I would just say you need to sit down and look out for the subjects and the outcomes that you desire. If you ask me upfront, I may not be able to give an example, but I just gave you some examples with regards to, uh, you know, the activities that we did. Uh, just to go back to your question, I would uh, take the example which I cited as ESAIL, the Engineering Service Assisted Integrated Learning. Now, okay. it was intentional to call it as ESAIL because it was a pilot run and we were not sure how it's going to yield results. But our intent is to remove E from there and make yeah. it SAIL, Service Assisted Integrated Learning, and pitch it to the entire University of Christ where we have 27,000 students. Okay. Now, how would that happen? Now, that would happen in a following way. A student of engineering with a group of students of psychology or from management will join hands. Go to a community. Students of engineering, the total picture will be a total encapsulation of a big picture. But they will be modularized with regards to the outcomes for an engineering student versus an outcome to a psychology student versus an outcome to a management student. Now, if you ask in a problem that we have identified for this, uh, you know, the non-invasive glucometer, a lot of people have an apprehension, a psychological apprehension. What is this device all about? Am I going to be exposed to something which is about radiation and it can affect me? But this is where a psychology students play a vital role. You understand what I'm yeah. trying to say? Now, yes, this is kind of, yeah, this is kind of an intertwining which happens and a perfect blend of multidisciplinary streams which can go which is need of the hour for the country at this point in time. Rather working in silos, go out there and see how well you can blend things out and bring about this blended learning back to the classroom. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, sir. Uh, sir, is there any chance for us to uh, collaborate with your institution? At oh, you're most uh, welcome. Yeah, you're most uh, welcome. I mean, if there's an opportunity, a uh, plan with uh, Dr. Tony and the team, you're most welcome to come and visit us. We can even take you around and show you the premises and see in what way we can, you know, uh, have some associations. We are most welcome for that. Thank you so much, sir. It's really kind of you. Anybody sir, else? Sir, this is Tony. Yes, Dr. Tony, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Can we say, uh, in a way, a scientist as an innovator? Uh, not necessarily you should be a scientist for an innovator. <laughs> yeah. I, I would put it up like that. We have, Perfect. in fact, uh, uh, so many you know people around here who have not even got education, but they're innovators. Okay. Uh, it's primarily a wisdom about, and, and what I think is like this, that innovation comes out of, a, you know, of an expression in an individual to do good for a society. Whenever you see someone is suffering out there, you need not have to have an education to see that a person is suffering or not. But if you have that good mind in you, you will reach out to that person to help him out. That is an urge. Your innovation has started there. Okay. It's only that you might not have the right traits for which you might want to integrate yourself or associate yourself with the right verticals, get them explored, and then integrate them to have a system. I just gave you a product. Product is just a minuscule in it. But more than that, uh, you cannot make a product without having a problem statement. And, I, mean, I mean, if you ask me, we would have never got this product been done unless we met a doctor who had a genuine pressing problem saying that, you know, look, my patients are not coming to the uh, PHC because they are scared of this pricking. On the other hand, so many uh, villages out there, one of the panchayat persons who came up and said, and he was an old gentleman, he said, uh, boys, we know there are like you, many people who came before, uh, before us. And they just came, saw, had a nice picnic and went back. But we have something very pressing out here. Even a kilometer ahead of this particular river, we go and dig a bore. We still get this dirty water. And we have to live with that because all that we can do is rely on bislary waters for drinking and for all other purposes use this water. Can you do something about it? Innovation has begun there. You don't need to be a scientist out there. And the kind of insights he gave us was itself a big learning exercise. We just did the job of putting things together, validating them conceptually because we know what works and what do not work. But according to me, they were the real innovators, having told, he would not have told had he not got a concern for his community. And I think that's the starting point. Okay, okay sir, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Sister Fancy, I think, uh, is that right? Yeah, I'm Sister Fancy, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay, thank you so much, sir. And uh, here respected dignitaries and the delegates of the webinar and uh, very good afternoon to all and I consider it is a great privilege uh, to be able to express my sincere gratitude on behalf of the Vamada family to our distinguished speaker on the section Dr. Ivan Chos and dear sir I can say that this section was a power packed and crystal clear and I can see that uh, Christ has spirit in you and you were able to guide us and so much information in a, such a small amount of time, an innovative and inspiring deliberation on the multiple aspect of blender cleaning. And uh, <clears throat> you recited very much practical examples on blender cleaning and elaborated on the scope of blender cleaning. And uh, it had been a great learning experience listening to you, sir. And I would like to please on record our heartfelt gratitude to you for accepting our invitation and engaging this section is a very wonderful section, I can say it. And I also thank all the esteemed delegates, participants of the webinar for the presence and uh, earnest participation. Once again, I thank you each and everyone for your active participation in this webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sister. And thank you all for listening to this presentation. And thank you, Dr. Tony, for inviting me to this uh, session of yours. Wishing you all the very best for the remaining sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, could I log out from here? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister, and thank you all for taking part in this session. The next session begins at 1.30 and it uh, ends at 3 a.m. 
3 p.m. So I hope you all will join at 1:30. Thank you very much.